Yo, what's up? Dante here. Uh, today's video, I'm going to read a, article, uh, a couple articles about Eric the Enemy. Now you're wondering, what could he have done in such a short amount of time to be making headlines? Well, apparently, uh, some of the players have an issue with his intensity. Um, yeah, okay. Very, uh, very, very, a very strange issue to have from a team that was what seven and nine, seven and ten, whatever last year, seven, seven, nine and one, or whatever. Uh, no one on this team has any right to be complaining about intensity. Because if they played with more intensity last year, they would have more wins and would have been in the playoffs. But we're not gonna we're not gonna go down that that uh, rabbit hole. So let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, it's from ESPN.com. The first article: Some Commanders players concerned by Eric Bieniemy's intensity. Ron Rivera says. Okay. Oh boy. All right. Washington Commanders coach Ron Rivera says some of his players expressed concern over new offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy's intensity during practice. But Bieniemy, also the assistant head coach, said he's not about to change his approach. He shouldn't. He is, is no reason to. What he does works, clearly. I'm always going to be loud, always going to be vocal, always going to demand from my leaders. Uh, Bieniemy said, adding he knows what would happen if he altered his belief. Yeah, they would get complacent and, and lethargic and lazy. They, they're not going. They're they're already not a great team as it is. If I ain't doing my job, my ass gets fired. Just like everyone else, it's my job and my responsibility to make sure I'm getting our guys to do what I'm expecting them to do. Um, let me see. Uh, if you don't know, I'll uh, read this to you. Uh, Washington hired the enemy this offseason after he spent the past 10 years with Kansas City, including the past the past five as the offensive coordinator when he won two Super Bowls. Ron Rivera hired him to in inject a spark into an offense that has not ranked above 20th in points or points above oh, Jesus Christ. Have, has not ranked above 20th in points or yards per game since 2017. We're going on four years. Uh, do math, boy. <laughs> we were going on seven years. They haven't been in. They've been in the bottom. What it was 20. So like the bottom third, almost of the league, in points and yards. It's, it's something you need to win the games with. Oh boy, it was also a critical year for Rivera into his fourth season. It's only been four years. Entered his fourth season in Washington and first with new owner Josh Harris. Bianami joined the staff with a reputation, reputation for being an intense, demanding coach. His approach has been evident, evident during the spring and summer practice. He can be heard more than any other coach when he correct, both when he corrects or praises a player. Uh, Bianami didn't waver in his intensity. Every running back hears the same word, finish, on each carry. He sent the first offense off the field because it didn't get into the huddle fast enough. He's demanded the offense get in and out of the huddle quicker. Yeah, they gotta stop playing, man. This is, uh, I don't know, I guess it's the money. I, I don't know why or how you feel. There should be no satisfaction on this team. They haven't done anything. There's nothing to be satisfied with. I want our guys to clearly understand we don't take anything for granted. The enemy said, uh, B enemy said, "You see me pull players and have long discussions with them, so we're always on the same page." Eric B enemy is who he is. Eric B enemy knows how to adapt and adjust. Eric B enemy is a tough, is a tough, hard nosed coach, but also understands I'm going to be the biggest and harshest critic, but also the number one fan. I got their back all the time. Rivera also, Rivera said some players were a little concerned. Now this is what this is the part I, I uh, I skimmed through. Yeah, well, yesterday when his article came out. This part right here just really sums it up. Rivera said some players were a little concerned with how hard the enemy was riding them. After the enemy was hired, there was concern over how some players would handle his approach. One source said in the offseason. 
so that some of them knew how he rolled, and they're still complaining and surprised he's acting the way they expected him to act. That, I swear, this team just can't. They can never get. There's always something with this team. I swear. I had a number of guys come to me and I said, "Hey, just go talk to them." Right? What? This is this is some. Come on, man. If you got a problem with the man, you need to go talk to him. Don't go. Don't go crying to Rivera. Unless unless he's doing something that's egregious. He's doing something that's not that he's not supposed to be doing. He's out there coaching you hard. That's his job. He ain't doing nothing malicious to you. He's not doing anything illegal to you. There's no reason to go to Ron Rivera for this. Go talk to Eric Bieniemy, and y'all can come to an understanding. Like you say, he's not going to change, but he'll sit. He'll listen to you. He'll give you that much, but he's not going to change his approach because it works. Like, look, man, if you if you're that if you're that sensitive about it, and it's too much for you, hey, you know what? You can always you can quit. You can give up the millions of dollars. No one stop you. It's a free country. You can. You don't have to play professional football. You know that, right? Uh, understand what he's trying to get across to you. Rivera says they go and they talk and they lit and they listen to him. It's been enlightening for a lot of these guys. I mean, it's a whole different approach. Uh, Bienri Bienri replaced the more low key Scott Turner who was fired after three seasons. I mean. I don't th- is that nece- I don't know if that's necessarily a, a personality thing because you don't have to be necessarily uh you know boisterous to be an effective coach but if that's what works for you that works clearly Scott Turner plus he didn't have a whole lot to work with anyway these last 3 years with the the quarterback switching out and, and a bunch of young pieces is there's only so much he can do um. Oh, and uh, with players complaining about the offense, Rivera said some of it stems from young players, perhaps coming out of programs that do not have coaches with similar intensity. Very true. Yeah, I mean, you gotta remember, most of the league is not from big power five schools. So, a guy may have been coached at Alabama, Georgia, where you know how saving is, he'll get on your butt. But uh, got some guy probably came out of like Liberty or something, and it's just a different mentality out there. Because Alabama, they you you go out there every week to win. The goal is national championship or bust. A lot of these other schools, they just kind of be like, oh, you know, we get six wins, we get into a bowl game, that'll be enough for us. He said those players sometimes struggle with this approach. As a coach, I have to assimilate and get a feel for everybody. Eric has an approach and it's the way he does things and it's not going to change because he believes in it. Uh, uh, oh, uh, geez, this is weird how they f- fra- form this sentence. Um, okay, okay I, I, I guess I had to put that in because uh, Jack Del Rio has his approach. Having been a head coach, I think Jack has a tendency to try to figure guys out a little bit more as opposed to, hey, this is it, this is the way it's going to be, that type of stuff. Eric hasn't had that experience yet. Uh, yeah, we know that. Jesus, 15 times? Uh, what does it say? He said he tries to head off any potential issues by sitting out with players before it gets too bad. He calls himself an open book. One, do, one thing they do appreciate, I'm always upfront and honest. BME said. Uh, this is a long article. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, okay, so one of the biggest things he talked about with us is just communicating. Washington receiver John Dawson said, We can go to him. His door is always open. That's what you want in the coach a guy who listens, a guy who acts upon the things you ask for. He's helping us. And get to where we want to be. Uh, Bienemy does not discriminate about which players he barks at during practice. In the spring, he chastised rece- receiver Jahan Dawson, a 2022 first-round pick. But he also pulled him aside and relayed how good he thought J- Dawson could become. 
When your offense has a strong series, the enemy is the first to greet the players coming off the field yelling good ish. That's what you want in a coach. Someone that gives you constructive criticism, but when you earn your flowers, he gives it to he gives them to you. Yeah, that's you don't want a guy that's always bringing you down, but you don't want a, a guy that's always gonna he's only telling you good things about you. He's not he's not critiquing you, he's not helping you get better. You can't get better with constant praise. Because you'll never know your mistakes. But you'll never, it's a, it works the opposite way. You'll never get better with with constant, uh, um, well, I guess, with constant, um, you know, uh, I guess, uh, negativity, I guess. Because if, if you're always getting chastised and you're never being, you know, construct you're never being criticized fairly on what you can do better you're never going to grow either so it's, you got to find that middle ground uh you gotta look f you gotta look at it for a bigger purpose he's coaching you hard because he believes in you yeah this remind this is something uh that remind me in uh when i was playing football and i don't know i remember who's who said it or who i heard it from but they said if uh, basically if the, if, the, if coach isn't yelling at you, that means he doesn't care. If he if he's not if he doesn't talk to you, he's not yelling at you. He's not get pulling you aside to have talks. That, that 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 usually means he doesn't really care. He doesn't really care for you. Like he doesn't he doesn't think he doesn't he doesn't have that belief in you. You know what I'm saying? He wants you to succeed. You got to realize. And even when he's getting on you about something you did wrong, he makes sure he make, he wants to make sure you get it right. So on Sundays, you don't make a fool of yourself. Um, and then uh, Antonio Gibson said the practice tempo has been the biggest adjustment. The team has run more plays and practice in the past at a faster pace. Uh, I haven't practiced like this since I've been in the league. That's probably going to help us in the long run. I feel like I'm probably in the best shape I've been in a while, a long while practicing like this. See, that's what that's what happened. A lot of these guys get to the league, and we can't keep using that excuse of uh, you know practice times are cut. You go and hit, but so much. I mean, at the end of the day, you've been playing football for so long. This stuff should be second nature. I, the, I get the hit thing. The hitting thing is probably the only thing I I agree with. You got to do more hitting in pads. I think because you got to get your body. Acclimated, so you know what I'm saying. If like if you're a boxer, if you uh, uh, a rookie boxer, right, up and coming boxer, you never had a fight. Well, it's different if you never get hit in the face, as as opposed to a guy who you know he's been fighting for ten years and he's been hit in the in the face multiple times, the, the temple, uh, chin, um, the ribs. You know, the side of the stomach. You know, he's been hit everywhere. So he, him taking them punches is not as bad as oh, the guy first time in the ring he gets hit and it's like oh my god, his whole world changes. It's, it's a it's a big it's a different mentality. Um, who is this? Sometimes some people can come off a little more soft and more caring, but sometimes you need someone to get into you. It just helps you. That shows they really care. That's what I said earlier. That shows they really care, and at the end, and at the same time, it's like get this done. So he ain't yelling at me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of times it's like, hey man, get this right, please, so I don't have to keep yelling at you. Um, Bianmi said he'll tell players why he said something to them in private. They got to understand we're in a grown man business. He said, my job is to make sure I do the best job of over communicating clearly. When I'm getting on them, it's not personal. What personal is, I want us to win. I expect that particular player to be great at all times. I expect that effort to be a standard that ex that that's accepted by all of us. If they don't reach it, my job is to address it. Yeah, and this uh, this sums it up. This, this is a grown man business. Stop running to the head coach for something that that's just a weird. That's a very weird complaint. Hey, coach coach over here is pushing us too hard man you are grown you are in the NFL bro you can't take a, 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 you can't take a guy like I said it's not a personal attack at you he's, he's, he's coaching you 
yelling and screaming, bro. You, if you play in the NFL, you had to play. You had to, at the minimum, you've had to play at least high school football, right, to even get in the league. You tell me you've never been yelled at by a coach? Come on, man. This stuff, this story is so stupid. I don't even know why this is a story. It's so. Oh my God! It's just oh man. I, I've wow. It's oh my God. This is uh. This is this is ugh. that that's uh. I, I don't even I don't even know what to what to say. It's so dumb, bro. It's soft. That's why this team is always always in the the dumps, man. I mean, they're, they're like in, in mediocrity, man. I'm like, come on, bro. And there was one, there, there, this, uh, there was a sentence somebody said, um, there was a, yeah, right here, there was concern of how some of the players, so some of the players knew how he rolls in practice. And it was still complaints. I'm like, bro, he, you understand he got hired. When did he get hired? Uh, probably February, right? Like after, right after the Super Bowl. So we're, we're just now in training camp. They've had six months to get to get over this, and they're still complaining. It's crazy. And then the the fact that someone went to rent went way went right over the enemy. And, and went straight to Ron Rivera. I'm like, first of all, that just shows you don't have um, a whole lot of respect for the enemy because if, if it's really that big of an issue, like I said, y'all are grown men, y'all not kids. You can go. I'm come on, man. I'm pretty sure you gonna walk up to that man and say, "Hey, coach. Hey, look, man. You, you need to calm down." And look, he may not calm down. He or he may. You, you never know. You don't. You won't know until you talk to him. So, until you talk to him, and even if he doesn't, like he said, he'll explain to you. Hey, man, look. No offense. This isn't personal. This is the way I've been coaching for what? Uh, well, he's been off for five years. For the last five years, it's got me two Super Bowls. You know, I think I, I think I know what I'm doing here. You know what I'm saying? I think I know I know a little bit of something here. You know what I'm saying? Not that you don't know anything. You know, I'm you I, you know something. You're in the league for a reason. You know how to play this game. But I think I just got a little bit more expertise on how to win. And it's just oh man, this is just golly, this is supposed to be an exciting time and then this is just just stupid stuff, man. It's so dumb, bro. Uh, let's check out this other article from NFL.com. Uh, Eric Bieniemy admits his intensity has required commanders to adjust in camp. Uh, do, 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 do. uh so yeah, we know it's for a season. Uh, force commander players to adjust. It's the enemy's first opportunity to prove himself outside the shadow of Andy Reid in Kansas City and his eagerness to is visible in his intensity. Some of his players haven't taken kindly to it, according to Coach Rivera. Yeah, they have. Um, and one of the biggest things is I had a number of guys come in and say, hey, just go talk to him. I said, understand what he's trying to get. I think I read this article. Um, yeah, I think I read all this, but it's the same thing. Uh, uh, yeah, but I mean, it's a whole different approach. Again, you're getting a you're getting a different kind of player from the players back in the past. Yep, especially in light of how things are coming out of college football. So a lot of these young guys, they do struggle with certain things, and a lot of it is from where they've been. I mean, guys coming from certain programs are used to it, right? Like I said earlier, guys coming from other programs aren't as much. So us as a coach, I kind of had to assimilate and get a feel for everybody. Eric has an approach, and it's the way he does things. And it's not going to change because he believes it. Believes in it. Uh, a change in staff will always present differences from past to present, to which players must adjust. Coaches don't come from central casting. Each arrives with their own unique path filled with experiences and lessons that often show 
excuse me, in their style, be enemies to which, excuse me, to which Rivera, Rivera alluded, come from decades spent in the game as a star running back at the University of Colorado and a nine-year NFL veteran, and then as a coach with 23 years of experience between collegiate and NFL stops. The enemy matured in a different era of football as a player and young assistant. He's been around the game for decades. His style isn't going to match with today's group of players effortlessly, but as one of his former star pass catchers was quick to point out on social media, it's worth following the enemy's lead. Uh, man, there is no other coach that has your back like EB. Former Chiefs and current Dolphins receive Tyreek Hill post to Tuesday. Take that coaching and get better. We all been through. It's tough, but I promise you it'll make you better. Yeah, if you if you if they take it for what it is, as coaching, uh, the, the man doesn't want, the man don't want you to to fail. He wants you to succeed. This isn't a, a difficult concept. He wants to succeed so he can succeed so he can keep his job so you can keep your job so Rivera can keep his job. It, it's all it, it's all weaving wo we, weaving. It's all woven together. I think woven, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know English. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, BME has heard the complaints and it isn't stubbornly ignoring them. But he's also not going to transform into a coach who spends individual periods resting and chatting when there's work to accomplish. Yeah, that's not who he is. He's a hard-nosed guy. He's a different... Like it said in the, in the, in the other paragraph... He's from a different time. But so is Rivera, too. Um, and I think the thing with me, the thing, my thing with Rivera, um, he, the, a lot of the stuff, I think people look at him as he's a bad coach. I don't think he's a bad coach. I think a lot of the stuff he got away with in Carolina is because the team was just all time. He had Cam. He had a young um, um, uh, uh, oh my God, Josh Norman. Um, he had re he had receivers. I can't. Who 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 did they have? Um, they didn't have they didn't have Funches. They had uh, like an older Steve Smith, a veteran Steve Smith. A great offensive line, a hell of a historic defense. I mean, he had a lot that he can. So it's a lot easier to coach a certain way when you got a lot of stuff going for you already. The the I think a lot of his flaws came out when he took this team because this team has been bad for yeah, twenty twenty three uh, for about twenty years now. Most of all my lifetime, actually. I, Cause I was born, I was born the year they won the Super Bowl. Oh no, I was born the year they the last time they went to the Super Bowl in '91. Cause they won in '90, I believe, and they went back in '91 and they lost. So I I have not experienced a Super Bowl or even a Super Bowl appearance in my life. I wasn't even born yet. I was born like. A few months later, so why did I get into that? Um, why did I why did I bring up that? I don't know why. Why did I bring that up? Um, I don't know why I brought that up. But anyway, uh, yeah, they did. They hit bottom half of the offensive offensive rankings. Uh, first of all, one thing I am, I'm an open book and I always invite players in. But also, too, as I've gone through this process, yes, I am intense. One thing they do appreciate is this. I'm always going to be up front and I'm always going to be honest. That's all you're going to ask for, man. That's all well, That's all anyone should ask for. Just like I stated when I first got here, we've all got to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. I feel like he took that from Prime. <laughs> I feel like... I, I, I could have swore Coach Prime said something like that. But I guess that's a universal statement. It, there's some new demands and expectations that I expect. I expect us to be the team that we're supposed to be, 
It's not going to be easy, and everyone ain't going to like the process. But when it's all said and done, my job is to make sure we're doing it the right way. There's a way to do it now. Now, do they understand that? Yes, because they, they're seeing the results. Will everyone buy it? I believe so. But if not, it's okay, because you know what? My number one job is to help these guys, is to help take these guys to another level, and I, and I can see it. Because when you think about where we started in the spring to where we are now, we're making a lot of strides. I'm proud of you guys. It's been some, excuse my language, some good-ish to watch. Uh, and then we have the talent. Uh, much of it depends on Sam Howe, but they have the built-in backup, Jacoby Brissett. Uh, and then you have McCall, McC McLaren. Jesus Christ, McCall, I was about to say McCaughlin. Curtis Samuels, Jahan Dawson, and Brian Ross. Yeah, they got they got some deep, they got some good weapons. Uh, McCall, McCl why do I keep calling him McLaughlin? McLaren needs that. He this is like he needs to have a breakout year. Um, the enemy has reason to remain confident he's doing his job properly, even with room for adjustment on the enemy's part. He wouldn't have earned the opportunity if his style hadn't been successful elsewhere in the in the past. The proof is in the results he's already posted. Now it's about implementing the lessons he learned with a team that could use a boost offensively, especially in a season with, in which Rivera needs to succeed to keep his job. So about this right here, I think I said this before in another, I don't, think, I don't know if I made a video about this, but this, I mean, this Rivera's on the hot seat because especially that, that botched coaching job he did last year, putting in carts and wins in a game we had to win to get into the playoffs and we lost and the week after I mean it didn't matter we beat Dallas but it didn't matter at that point we were already out of it and I said I don't think I said it on the video but I said it to someone else that um, if they get off to a bad start they'll 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 use that, and the enemy's gonna be the enemy. If they get off to a really bad start this year, the enemy will be the head coach. I, I believe that. I think that I think they brought him in specifically for. Uh, he's not gonna be the offensive coordinator for long, uh, unless they win this year. I think Rivera has to make the play. He cannot miss the playoffs again. I don't care if they go eight and nine or nine if they go they have to make the play and if they go nine and eight they don't make the playoffs he's gone because they'd have done every, they'd have got all these young guys they got Chase Chase Young hopefully he's coming back um we'll see what Howell can do but you really can't put a whole bunch on him but like we gotta see this man coach cause he's got enough to to win the East you don't know Dallas. You don't know what's going on. They talking about getting rid of Zeke, or oh, is Zeke gone? Or oh, they trying? They trying to get rid of Zeke. But he's going to put. He's going to put all the pressure on Dak, and Dak is not the greatest of quarterbacks. Daniel Jones. I, I still don't believe in that guy. I don't care what you say. That guy is not. The, that guy is not going to take them dudes over the hump. And then you're not getting. We're not. No one's getting past Philly right now. Unless they just collapse, they'll they'll be favorites to win the NFC. So it's like, you know, there's gonna be a lot of, you know, a lot of pushing and shoving for second place in that division. So they got they gotta get they they have to at least they have to get in as a wild card. They're not winning that division. So that means it, at the the worst they can finish is second. They cannot be unless they have one of them situations like they had last year. Where we were, we were. It was a point when the NFC East could have had all four teams in the playoffs. We were that competitive. It was crazy, but yeah, he has to win or he's out of here. Uh, with the group, I'm always going to remain the same. I'm always going to be loud. And I'm always going to be vocal. I'm always going to demand for my leaders. But on top of that, I'm watching everything: body language, how we address in the huddle, how we're getting up to the line of scrimmage, how we're presenting ourselves. Those things are important because you got to send a message to the defense. So I want our guys to clearly understand that we're not taking anything for granted. 
Um, if the enemy's approach works, all the strain of Kent will have been worth it. The enemy undoubtedly believes this to be true, even if he's already had to listen to some negative feedback from his pupils. Uh, the enemy is who he is. The enemy knows how to adapt and just, he said, and, oh, I think I, I read all that already. Okay, so yeah, there you go. That, so, yeah, this, oh my God, th I think this story does not need to exist. This is just something, look, man, it's training camp. It, it, they got to find something to talk about because to be, to be completely honest, when it comes to sports, at the end of the day, it is about entertainment. And for some people, it's just it's not enough just to watch the game. There has to be something to entertain, which is the weird. Is which is weird. You need you need to be entertained to watch something that's already meant to entertain you. Like you're watching the football game. It's entertainment. How much more entertain? Like I said, I don't really care. But I never care really about play by play unless it's someone that's really good at it or it's really funny like when you watch um um like I don't know like uh, NBA basketball right I don't care if you got Dur Doris Burke I don't care if you got Mark Jackson um I don't care who's on there man I don't really. I could watch the game. I mean, if, it, if they're on and it's if they're on, they're commentating cool. If I got a, the game on mute because I'm doing something on this computer, I can enjoy this foot. I can enjoy the game and not care about any of the commentary because at the end of the day, the sport should be the entertainment, not everything around the, the sport. Everything around the sport is bonus. So all this stuff, this is just some stuff to make some headlines and get some clicks. Uh, you know, rightfully so. I, I'm the one clicking on it. But it, this is a non-story because everyone, this is happening all. This is happening all over the NFL. This is happening all over college football. This is happening all over high school football. There are, in terms of, I mean, not. I'm, I'm not saying there's a bunch of the enemies out there, but in terms of um in in terms of the way he coaches, the way of his coaching style, there are hundreds of guys like him that are out there doing the same thing at every level right now. But this this specific team they made this a story because there's nothing else, because it was I guess it was a slow news day or something. There was nothing to talk about. I mean, this ain't it. This is this is just this actually this makes you this makes the team look worse because now it it makes it like there's some kind of infight when it's not it's just a bunch of sensitive probably a bunch of rookies and in, in second years that don't understand like look the intensity is necessary because it's not just about you winning and, and you know winning cha you want to win championships you want to win games but at the end of the day it's also a business. They get paid a lot of money for this. I'm sorry someone's yelling at you because they want you to do your job to the best of your abilities be so you can produce results. I don't know. That's just the crazy concept, right? That someone wants you to produce results because you get paid an absorbent amount of money to produce results. And I, 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 when it comes to all these salaries, it's just so ridiculous. They want this, that, and the third that come with the salary, but don't get they don't give anything in return to justify that salary. It doesn't make any sense, bro. And it's even it's, in my opinion, it's worse in the NF, in the, uh, in the NBA because there's only but so many people. But all of them do. I think somebody, some dude, or some team signed like a. Like uh, a couple guys, they sound like some four or five year deal, like 80, 90, 100 million dollars. I'm like, bruh, like, and these guys aren't like, they're not even like the best. They're not even like the, they're not even like, they're probably like in the rotation, but they're not like the true, they're not even the true starting five. And they're getting paid like starter money. I'm like, bruh, what? Where do we do that at? 
And then people, and then everyone would be complaining, hey man, we ain't have enough help. Well, no stuff. You All the money keeps going into all these people who don't deserve all that money. I'm sorry. Look, man, some of y'all deserve, I guess, uh, I guess in the NBA, for example, I'll use that example. You know, you can get you four or five years, but I'm not going to give you 80 million. I'm going to give you 35, maybe 40. I'm not going to give you 80, 90 million. For what? For you to give me eight points a game, ten points a game, and to be fair, I, I get it. It's a very hard sport. I'm not. I'm not downplaying that. But there are just guys out there that are just that are, that are much better that deserve them contracts. And I think that's that's one of the things. I don't know. That's going on a tangent, but something else. But yeah. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think. This is a uh, boy. It's just another case. Uh, it's another case of Washington being Washington, right? It's always something. It's never about. It, it's never a story about winning football games. Oh, it's about some drama. It's 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 good. Boy, I hope it's not a rough season this year. I really hope. I really hope not, man. These, these guys, we got, we got to win this year, man. At least get into the playoffs. Cause you, you, once you get into the playoffs. Anything can happen. You never know. Uh, but yeah, that that's all I got for this story. I know I went on long for this, but I just had a lot to say. And yeah, man. All right. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.